Hello all, John Bloodworth, Gentleman Crafter here for another video on my YouTube channel. This week I've been contacted by a couple of sisters who set up a business called Just For You Online UK and they do all sorts of different grades of glitters and pigments and the reason they contacted me was because of a blog post I wrote about getting into art resin, that's this stuff here. Um, and what they said is we're going to send you some stuff and we want you to make something, do whatever you fancy. So I was like, yeah, okay, that's fine. So a whole bunch of different glitters and different pigments turned up. And uh, I basically sat down and made this entire video, just because I fancied doing it. Anyway, the results are phenomenal, and I'm really excited to share this video with you. Um, obviously, what I'll do is I'll put links for um, stuff about art resin, stuff about Rebel Glitters, and Just For You Online UK in the description below the video, but in the meantime, I think it's probably best if I just crack on and then you can see what I did and how it came out. Just before I make a start, I thought I'd show you through some of the glitters that I got. Some I'll be using in this video, some I'll be using in future videos, but I thought it would be great to show you the different kind of range of things that are available at Just For You Online UK, so you can see the kinds of things that you could be using in your art resin. Um, so there are glitters f uh, in different grades from super fine all the way through to super chunky and then in the little pots that I'm showing you there are an assortment of um, different mixes of glitters and also pigment powders which mix with your resin to create um, like a metallic resin and it's absolutely stunning. So, as I say, I will be using a range of these in the video today and a range in the future. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what's available so you can go and have a look if you fancy. So here we are over at the work area. I've gathered all of my bits and pieces. I've got measuring cups, I've got mixing cups, I've got my glitters and my moulds. Most important factor though obviously is the resin. I'm using art resin for this and it's a one to one ratio. So I'm using some measuring cups just to measure out basically 60 millilitres of each. Now the moulds I believe take around 120 millilitres so I'll need to do a couple of these. And once I have both measured out, I just pour them straight into the mixing cup. Giving them time to drain. Now at this point, I actually noticed that there was only really half of these small bottles left. These are the four ounce bottles. So I thought, why not just chuck the whole lot in and then if I've got any spare, I can... Um, uh, just pour them into something else. So I basically let those drain into the mixing cup. Right, now for the mixing. Slow and steady. I generally am going with like one revolution every second. That also helps me measure the time because you need to mix for a minimum of three minutes. You'll see it turn cloudy fairly quickly and then as you mix the clarity will return and you'll see that. I'll speed this up so you can see how that goes. Um, but basically just slow and steady. You're looking for a, a stirring motion as opposed to a folding. You're trying to avoid getting air bubbles into this. You will get some but we've got ways of getting rid of them as well. Make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom so that you're getting all of the hardener and the resin mixed together thoroughly. If it gets tired on your hand, switch hands. If you've got a timer, you can use a timer. I generally counted and every 60 seconds I scrape the sides of the mixing cup just so that I made sure to get a good and thorough mix. You can wipe off your tools by the way with a paper towel and then reuse them but if you are using things like 
uh, a metal teaspoon I wouldn't go and use them for food use again afterwards just use them for your resin now I've got these fabulous glitters and bits and pieces from um, just for you online and they've got the rebel glitters there as well so I'm using smaller mixing cups now and I'm just putting about half of each into or sorry pouring the resin into these measuring cups up to about halfway in each of those cups and then I'm going to mix in some of the glitters and pigments into each one art resin isn't a dribbler by the way this is almost like pouring syrup or honey and when you sort of stop pouring it'll back up into the mixing cup if you do get a little dribble on the side just wipe it up back into the cup and then store your mixing cup somewhere where it's not going to damage your surfaces obviously you may want to cover your table I'm working entirely on a metal tray here anyway so that wasn't too bad for me I did put the mixing cup in a naughty place but it wasn't dribbling down the side so I thought it'd be okay now you don't need much of these glitters or pigments just maybe half to a quarter of a teaspoon or vice versa a quarter to a half of a teaspoon um, per 30 millilitres of resin and that will go a long way to colouring and adding excitement to your project you can see how little I'm using there of the actual pigment itself and that will almost turn into like a, a pearlescent paint These glitter flakes are amazing. I've got an iridescent one there and then um, like a, not a peacock, what's the word? Oh, maybe I am thinking peacock. This turquoise is beautiful. I've also got some of the huge chunks here of the rebel glitters. So I am going to use those in a moment but I just wanted to get that packet open and ready for um, sprinkling. Okay, I'm going to start out by pouring just some of the clear resin into the mold. And I'm starting at one corner so that it spreads out and comes into contact with the sides and corners. Now I'm going to drop some of those large chunky bits into that. And then I'm going to start pouring some of my pre-mixed pigment. I'm basically getting it into the areas where I want it and then I'm going to mix it in a bit, in a bit and blend it together. love this ir iridescent glitter or glitter flakes sorry it's beautiful I think you can already see how it's twinkling within that resin it's gonna look fab okay going back in with more clear resin now as you add clear resin it's going to spread whatever is there already so use it almost to push things around or, or spread them where you want them to go. That's what I was doing anyway. I've got the lip of the cup quite close to the mould and I'm pouring very gradually. Basically I'm trying again to avoid getting bubbles in there. Now I'm going to take some more of that pre-mixed pigment and I'm going to drop it along the edge. Now as you can see it puddles within the clear resin so I will have to either add something else on top or push it around with air from a heat gun perhaps 
or even just mix it up as I'm going to do in a minute in order to spread it out. I'm using a little plastic pipette. You can use a cocktail stick or basically whatever you fancy using really. And I'm just doing small circular motions to mix up and blend what's there. Also helps me push some of that pigment towards the edge of the mold. As you can see again, I'm not doing a whipping motion, it's just gently stirring. I'll speed it up now a little bit because I did spend quite a while just fiddle faffing around and spreading things out. So I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to achieve a darker, intense um, colour towards the edge and the corner and then have some of that clear resin or partly mixed resin in the centre with all the glitter. And then, then it'll look like some kind of inclusion in a slice of a gate. OK, I'm going to go on to the second one now. Um, but just before I do, I'm going to drop in some of that pigment, oh sorry, pigmented resin, into this little brooch that I've got, or necklace, and just see how that comes out. I'm curious, because with the moulds you're basically working from the back towards the front, the front will be at the base of the mould, whereas with the um, necklace, it actually, um, what you see on top is what's going to be on top. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any difference. Sorry about my chubby hands in marigolds getting in the way here, but basically I'm pouring the pigmented resin along the edge of the um, quarter slice. And then I'm just using my little plastic stirrer to spread that out a little bit and to push it up against the edge of the mould. Next up, just doing lines of the um, pre-mixed glitters and glitter flakes and working dark to light from the outside edge. Just again using that spatula to spread it out a bit and then dragging in some of the pigment using the edge of that spatula. And then I'm going to pour the rest of the clear resin in here and that's going to basically then spread all of that stuff out back towards the outer edge. You can already see that. It's looking amazing, isn't it? And then just dropping some of those big Rebel Glitter chunks in for a bit of an extra excitement and I'm almost ready to leave those to cure. But first up, just to get rid of all those micro bubbles that will have risen to the top by now, I am using a little um, kitchen blowtorch and just keeping it moving over the surface and angling my head so I can see light reflected in the resin so that I can see that those bubbles are popping. Now I have checked online, this is the best way of getting rid of those bubbles. Um, please feel free to check out the Art Resin YouTube page as well because there they give a good explanation of why this method is the best. And I totally agree with it, which is why I went against what I was thinking of in using a heat tool and went and chose this instead. 
Now I did actually come back about 45 minutes after I'd left these and did a second heat um, application to get rid of any further bubbles that had come up. Okay, all the pouring's done, all the prep's done, time to leave that to cure for 24 hours. So here we are at the demolding stage 24 hours later. So I've got my things ready to take out of their mould and also a smooth glass sheet to put them on. Basically it needs to be smooth um, and flat because although we've been curing for 24 hours there is still some flexibility in that resin because it needs to fully cure for 72 hours. So I've still got another two days of curing um, whereby the actual piece could distort. So carefully remove them from the mould and you can see how amazingly smooth and flat those are and no air bubbles, yes! So that torching it really did work. Um, okay so that's the first one, quite liking that, although there is a lot of clear resin I'll have to think about what I'll do there, maybe put some glitter paint on the back. And here's the second one. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just carefully teasing away the edges all the way around and it separates very easily with these moulds from Just For You Online UK. And then carefully peeling back. Ooh, look at that. So this is technically the front of my piece but I guess if you prefer the back you could have the back because thanks to that air bubble popping they're as smooth as um, anything. <laughs> they're very smooth on both sides which is perfect and that chunky glitter really does show up well. Now I'm not supposed to tell you about these ones until a couple of weeks time so shush. So instead I will give you a closer look at the two that I have demolded in this video. So this is one of them. This was the one where I did the um, coloured pigment across the outside edge and then spread layers and then spread the clear resin from the centre towards the outer edge. Um, and then the next one was where I'd done two different bands of colour and then spent a lot of time um, you know, mixing up and you can see how well that spread the pigment. Um, it's really sort of spread out and I love that cluster of chunky glitters towards the point. I think they're really cool. I think what I will do in the future though is possibly increase the amount of pigment that I use and um, maybe even use a couple of different types of pigment in there as well just to give it a little, a little more difference. You can see how well it catches the light though. So there we go, fantastic wasn't it? I'm definitely gonna give it another go because I'd like to try changing the mixture that I create for um, the different resin types. So anyway, hope you'll join me for that one. If you like this video in particular, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and of course uh, hit the subscribe button so that you'll get notifications of whenever I upload new content. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.